Good morning, everybody. It's November 1st, 2023. Glad you're all here. Um, looks like you're coming in from all over. Thanks for joining me. I am, um, if I look tired, it's because I am. <laughs> um, I've been moving, if you didn't know, and so I will apologize for all the things that will not work today. Um, I hope that it's streaming. My internet is much slower here also, so um, I'm hoping that the stream is okay, but I guess you'll let me know if it's not, and I don't know what I'll do about that, but um, it's November 1st. If you um, would like to make a donation to change the shed to keep it free and on YouTube instead of behind a paywall, um, you can do that at the... Um, website here on the Change the Shed page, which is under online learning. That would be so appreciated, and I appreciate everybody who um, helps me out a little bit. Some people donate every month, and I really appreciate that so much because um, I can't keep doing this for free. It does take a lot of time. So if you want to add a donation, that would be really great, even if it's just a buck or two. Um, the next Change the Shed will be on November 22nd. Um, because I will be teaching the week before that. So that's the day before Thanksgiving if you're in the United States. If you're somewhere else, it's just a Wednesday. Um, I have a Fiber Monday sale. One day a year I have a sale on all of my online classes, and that will be on November 27. In the United States, it's often, well, maybe worldwide, I don't know. It's called Cyber Monday, which is for digital products, but I have changed that to Fiber Monday, and every class that I have will be discounted except for the Tapestry Discovery Box, which is a different kind of collaboration. And speaking of that, there's a new Tapestry Discovery Box that just came out two weeks ago, so if you want to jump on, that would be great. We're doing uh, shape building this uh, quarter and it's so far it's been really fun and I've seen people making some really great things. So thanks for popping in from everywhere. It looks like Barbara's here from California and another Barbara's here from Germany. Welcome and Sybil's here from Switzerland and Mary from Wisconsin. Um, uh, Betsy and Mary Lou, Massachusetts, uh, Vermont, Virginia, um, Texas, Jean is experimenting with wedge weave. That's really fun. Paul is here from the UK. Carol from Bainbridge in Washington. Um, Carol's uh, another Carol. Oh, same Carol, working on her new Tapestry Discovery Box. Hooray! Um, uh, weaving towels for Christmas gifts. That's a good thing to do this time of year. Um, thank you, Karen, for the congratulations on the new house. This is my new studio. And uh, it has a long way to go. As you can see right behind me, that's my loom. Actually, that's several looms and boxes, and those have not been set up yet, obviously. Um, Las Vegas, Portland, Dave's here from the UK. Uh, yes, just finished his angle sampler. Cool, Dave. Um, Marlene is here from Texas, and Paula from Vermont. Um, Sarah's here from Idaho. Spinning paper. I can't wait to see it, Sarah. Nan's here working on the Waves Tapestry for the Tapestry Discovery Box. Uh, Victoria's here from Wine Country. Glad you're here, Victoria. Erin from Kansas. Monique from Vancouver, BC. Christine also from Canada. Um, Linda from Scotland. Thanks for coming, everybody. Jessica's here from Illinois. Seattle, Vancouver, uh, London. We have quite a crowd today. Thanks for coming, y'all. I guess when I'm gone for a while, maybe. <laughs> Pop in again. Um, Robin's here from Ontario. Kathleen from Vermont, Pittsburgh. I'm sure I'm missing people. Sherry's here from California. Uh, Margaret from Oregon. Vivian's here from Peru. Welcome. Um, Eve is here from Spain. Kathy from uh, the Adirondacks, beautiful part of probably New York. Uh, Matt is here from Denmark. Tracy from California. Um, Kathy from Wisconsin. Um, Kathy, I hear you. She says, hi from Wisconsin. I'm not weaving because I moved and I'm buried in boxes. I can't find anything. This is how I feel. There are boxes everywhere. So last week I thought I was going to do Change the Shed and clearly I was not here. Um, this week I feel like it's not actually that much better. Um, 
but I was able to find my camera and uh, some lights. So uh, perhaps we will figure this out. I need to figure out a configuration for the studio. I'm actually looking at a huge window and the sun is streaming in today. So I had to put figure out the blinds, which let me tell you was more complicated than it should be. Blinds should not be so complicated. Um, yeah, so uh, first world problems, like anyway, um, unpacking and finding things is a real uh, challenge. So um, yeah, I hear you, Kathy. It's, uh, it's that frustrating point where you can't find anything. Like I looked Yesterday, I looked for 20 minutes for blue tape. I remember packing perhaps five or six rolls of blue tape, and I needed it, and I couldn't find a single roll. So, um, Paula also said, <laughs> moved recently, can't find anything. Um, oh, no, Dave's moving in a couple of weeks. Get that angle sampler done first, Dave, so that you, because <laughs> you won't be able to find it after you move. Yeah, you can just see part of the room here. Um, there's my Harrisville rug loom plus a couple other looms. And it's just um, still all in boxes. I found my computer and I found this project that I'm um, working on, which you have seen before. But um, yeah, Monique, I don't know. Um, I can't do that right now, but I could... She asked if I could turn on my YouTube channel membership. I think it's already on. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that, Monique. I can't do it right now because um, I'm running this whole thing, but I'll look at it for future. I have had people contribute through YouTube, um, and that's always appreciated. Also, YouTube takes, Google takes a huge chunk of that. If you give me a dollar through YouTube, um, it's Great. I mean, I know it's so easy, but it also they take a lot of it. So, um, yeah, Jessica says that's when she goes to buy even more blue tape. This is the problem. I'm like, I can't find anything. There's a Walmart down the road. I'm going to go, you know, whatever. And then I find it three seconds later. So, oh, well, oh, well, um, I hope y'all are working fine. I will have a more, um, more of a studio tour on my blog, which I write every week. If you don't know about that, it's on my website. I know blogs seem old school to people, but um, I still do mine. And if you want information about tapestry weaving, it's a really good place to find a lot of free information. So if you go to tapestryweaving.com and look for the blog in navigation, um, there's lots and lots of stuff there that is free and lots of videos. And um, let's see, this is where I'm living now. I'll show you the outside. This is not from my property, but it's close. Um, I was driving um, from the town of Mancus, which is very close to here. And uh, the leaves were turning. And anyway, um, it's a really beautiful place. It is rural. It is west of Durango, if you know where that is, near the Four Corners. And I grew up near here, so I feel like I've come home again. And it's uh, very pretty. You'll see more pictures um, soon of the studio, and I'll probably do a video um, once I figure out how I'm going to get these <laughs> looms back together. Not all the looms will be going in this studio. The space is smaller than my last studio. Um, but a better configuration. So, and here is last night my attempts to get our dogs to sit still for a picture. Um, I'll have more pictures on the blog this week of the Halloween costumes. I'm now a person apparently who has small dogs and puts them in costumes, which um, never thought that would be the case. But that's Sal, Cisha, Sally, and she has her little. Um, butterfly costume, which she wore happily for hours yesterday. And uh, yeah, anyway, life in a new place. Um, yeah, Marlena, um, thanks. I'm glad that you find the blog useful. I appreciate that. Um, a lot of people have stopped their blogs, and I find that it's kind of a loss of information. Some people, though, have started um, Substacks, which is just as good. Um, so like Sarah, you could follow her gusset. Um, you will learn so much. 
um, which Substack is just an email um, thing that you can subscribe to. And or actually, Sarah also has a free version and get a lot of it's like a blog, but it comes via email. Let's just say that. Uh, yeah, welcome, Carol from Minnesota. The pups, Mary asked how the pups have adjusted. It's been, um, they've been okay. They've been to too many veterinarians since we've been here. So we've had some medical issues. And um, for Bo, uh, you know, the little rescue guy, he's doing better though. He's adjusting a bit at a time. And I think they're gonna do fine. So we just have to, there's a lot of prairie dogs here because we're rural. And so I'm of course worried about fleas and plague. And so <laughs> there's always something else to worry about. Oh, and coyotes, lots of coyotes. Um, so they don't get to run around without uh, a leash on, but they're doing great. Um, thanks for asking, Mary. Um, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, I appreciate those of you who read the blog. Sometimes it's silly and sometimes I do. Um, there's lots and lots of posts with like educational, informational stuff. So uh, great. Well, guess what tapestry I have today? Um, the only one that I didn't cut off the loom before I left and one that you have seen many times before. The other thing is that um, I've got to move a light here. Uh, I don't have things set up. Um, yeah, that's probably not going to be great. I'm just going to make this really small. Ah, sorry. Hang on. I'm just going to do this. Um, hopefully most of you don't need to see my face because that light is just, I can't do anything about it. Right now I have to figure out how to configure the studio and I didn't have time to get it done. Um, yeah, this is uh, the dipper piece that I'm still working on. I think I wrote a blog post about it and I've shown it on this. It's from last summer. Summer Tapestry comes back to tell me that I still haven't finished. Um, so let's finish this <laughs> and move on with our lives, right? Um, if those of you who, I mean, I think most of you maybe have seen this before, but it's the little tapestry. It's about um, the little dipper birds that we have in Colorado. They're so cute. Um, so I wanted the feeling of water and some interesting movement in the background. And then the little, the dippers have this little dance where they like bob up and down. And so I was using pick and pick for that. And I need to remember, I'm going to put some more pick and pick up here to sort of follow this line up. And I can't forget to do that. Um, thanks, you guys. Lots of you have piped in and said the blog is useful. I appreciate that. Um, it is... Uh, it's fun to write. It's also, you know, it takes time to do anything like that, but I think it's worth it. Um, this is just filling in. Those of you who are doing the Tapestry Discovery Box, we're going to build up some shapes. This quarter was about um, building shapes, and of course we do that all the time for various reasons. So I'm going for, to fill in this little area, um, and these uh, curves are in white again. So we just need to fill in enough to get that up there. Okay, so let's fill in a shape. Um, I do apologize for not showing you more of the studio today. I just really, really thought that by this time we've been here. How long have we been here? It's probably almost two weeks now. And I thought, oh, for sure, I'll have the studio set up. Um, nope. There's always something else, like an emergency trip to the veterinarian or... Who knows? 
many things. So this piece has been really fun. I, you notice I'm just sort of twisting this a little bit as I lay these colors in. I just want them to blend a tiny bit. I'm not doing like a, it's just a casual addition of some twist and it doesn't always twist. This is a fringeless warp if you didn't notice for selvage. So that's why it looks kind of funny down here. This is a Merrick Sloom, it's a Merrick's big sister, but I'm using it obviously without the shedding device. I find that you can use a shedding device on the uh, fringeless warps if you're careful. Um, but if you're not careful, the action, or especially if you use a treadle, electric treadle, the action of the shifting of the shed, if you do it too quickly, can make the fringeless warp walk a little bit, at least at the beginning of your weaving. Um, once you've woven, probably once I'd woven this much, I could probably pop the shedding device on right now and it would act just fine. Hmm. You know what? I didn't really go down far enough over there. <laughs> Can you see that? Uh, you know what? I'm not taking that out. Just going to weave a little extra. Fill it in. It's not cheating, it's just tapestry. All right, is that going to be better? Yeah. <laughs> um, Corey says she's been, she's new to my blog, so she's been binge reading it. Um, there's some really crazy stuff in there. There's a whole story about skunks if you go back far enough to like 2011. I started writing it in 2008 and it has changed a lot over the years. Um, I also had to search for yarn last night. But I think I found what I need. I'm making this, I've changed, you can actually kind of see that maybe. I've changed one of the colors out here so it's getting a little darker and it's a little lighter there. Anyway, it's the, these are the olive greens from um, Gist Yarn. I'm mixing it with a little indigo. This tapestry is, Patrice asked how wide this tapestry is. Um, of course I don't have a ruler right here. I think it's either seven or eight inches wide. It's probably eight by three or something because for a long time I was doing tapestries of that format. I also had an issue with my uh, microphone this morning, so I'm hoping that, I'm just using my computer mic right now, I'm hoping that y'all can hear me okay. All right, I need a little, uh, it's a little too much. Okay, I'm gonna fill in this little curve. Let's see, got some dots here that tend to get lost. Okay. 
I'm just going to build this up like this. Notice I'm leaving my fingers in there as I pull the yarn through because I'm not using a bobbin. I could use a bobbin, which would protect the yarn. You pull the yarn through like this on a closed shed. If you know, if you do that and you notice that your yarn is really fuzzy, it's because you're pulling it through a closed shed. So yes, and you can tell your husband um, all the times he doesn't see me, it's not cheating, it's tapestry. You can tell him, you can tell him whatever you want, honestly, but. All right. I hope that you all have had a good October and have had some time for some weaving. Wherever you are in the world. Um, all right, I need some white yarn. Where have I put it? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, seriously. I'm just not seeing it, y'all. It has to be here because I used it last night. Um, great. Awesome. Hold on, one more place. Ah. Well, it's been a morning, y'all. Um, I found the natural color, but that is not what I want. And I have no idea where it is, so I guess we'll work on something else until I find the white yarn. Simply don't understand where it went. Um, but like I said, I'm tired. And I swear it was right here. There must be ghosts. It's ghosts, right? I'm really sorry. Um, all right, let's work on this other part. So we need the white again. It's kind of bubbling by pulling in the weft. I put a little bit too much in there to start with. Um, okay, this just fills in the edge. Mary says to blame the yarn on the dogs. That's why we have them. My dogs are about this high off the ground. I mean, they're like full stature, seven inches. So I, it might be hard for me to blame it on the dogs. Although the little one has learned to jump to get on the table. If I leave a chair pulled out, she will. She can jump. She's very athletic. She can uh, jump right up and then help herself to whatever's on the table. So that is a training moment in process. Definitely the dogs have not gotten this particular yarn, but they, I had, yesterday had a moment where I came out of the studio and Sal was running around the house at full tilt with a ball of purple yarn in her hair, uh, in her mouth unraveling it behind her and wrapping it around all of the furniture. Um, it was kind of funny. and <laughs> It was funny. 
She's very cute. They both love yarn. So this is, of course, a problem. Um, it's probably here. I'm just not seeing it because I literally used it 12 hours ago. It's that thing where you get stressed and nervous and you can't, your brain doesn't work and I just can't think where I would have set it down. So that's okay. We don't need it for this part right here. Um, let's see. I'm using, I'm trying to um, flip around which of these uh, olives I'm using. I'm going to use the lighter ones still with this indigo four. These are just array yarn colors. Probably could use more of this tail before I splice it. Let's see. I hope that you guys are weaving something. doing something fun and creative. Um, ah, Carol says she has a doxy. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Carol. My, uh, they're both Dotsons and they certainly would take advantage of any available yarn in a heartbeat. So that is uh, one thing I have to work on. This will be a, a studio. I'll have to have some new studio policies about where I keep my yarn. Um, I just didn't let them in the studio in the last house. And uh, of course I was packing pretty much by the time we got them, but. All right, let's see. These are more white lines, so <laughs> that's fun since I can't find the white. Um, Kathleen asked if, I know if Taos Wool's packages smaller bundles of their wool, if you want to sample it. Um, I just taught in Taos, and so Joe did package some smaller amounts for the class that I taught, but he doesn't generally do that. If I were you, I would just call him. He's super nice and he will tell you whether he's um, going to offer them in smaller put-ups or whether he has leftovers from the class that we just did. That'd be another thing. Um, for a minute I thought this was the white. It's not. Um, yeah, I would call jo I would call him or email him. He's He's really nice and if he has any smaller samples left from the class, he might be willing to sell those to you. We were using one ounce instead of four ounce gains, so that was fun. Um, Susan says the moving goblins hid the yarn. That's probably true. Uh, Jessica's cats. Sarah, yes, it's a comic in the making. Sal turned my house into a labyrinth. Actually, that's not a bad idea to uh, make a drawing of Sal's <laughs> antics. I uh, did take a video, and it's really funny to watch. Um, Carol, yes, she's a freestyle weaver, for sure. She's using the furniture as her um, loom. Okay. Um, sorry, you all. I'm just really fixated on this white because I need it, and I don't have any idea where it went. Um I'll fill in this shape and then we will call it a day on this weaving until I find that yarn.
I would say that I will have this done by the time we talk again in November 22nd, but I'm going to teach in Taos in the meantime, and so it seems unlikely. All right, I also, right here, need to get in, actually, let's add that right now. We can do that. I've got uh, the return of the pick and pick. So let's see what I did down here. I want to add just debating which of these colors to start with. These are, if you use this yarn, Cayenne 1 and 2 and Burgundy 3 and one. I don't think I want the lighter one. Let's use these three because I'm just lazy enough to want to pull them all off at once. Sounds like you're having fun, Karen. Three looms going. Color class final project, awesome. That must be the, I can't remember if that maybe is the um, color gradation class that I sometimes forget to mention. It's a really fun online class. Discovery box and a panda for her granddaughter. That's awesome. Okay. I am going to do a little, actually considered leaving this out, um, but I may attempt it. Uh, so I want this line to come in around this white shape, and then this will be more pick and pick. So I just actually, for a little bit, want a one warp wrap. Let's start with a pigtail, and I'm just going to wrap it a couple times to see if it will stay in. I think Sarah might. Sarah does this cool thing. She has, Sarah Sweat has this uh, tucking the tails um, zine that she did that you can get on her website, actually, but... Um, she does this thing where in a situation like this where she takes a needle and she just needles it right down in. Actually, she demonstrates this in the fringeless class too. And um, yeah, I'm going to hedge on Sarah's needle technique for a minute. But I suspect this will drive me nuts enough that I will utilize it. If I can find a needle, there's the next question. I don't have any needles right here. Oh, Lord. Moving is so disruptive. Absolutely everything has to change. Not absolutely everything. I don't have to change accountants or... Uh, my business is still in the same state, so that's helpful. Okay. No wisps. Yes. Um, Sarah says that it keeps things tidy, which I like tidy also. The needle thing. So keeping things from being messy.
<laughs> yeah. Patrice said she wants to take the fringe list class. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you watch the live thing that Sarah and I did in September, there's a discount code in there that we just turned to November. I'm fairly sure is good until I say it in the um, thing we did. I'm fairly sure it's good until the end of November. That's a valley thread, so I'm going to double this up. Those of you who are working on angles, that's a hill. This is a valley, so I'm going to stick, stick two on top of each other there and know it will work out. Uh, I am working on the from the front on this tapestry. If you, I'm sure you already figured that out. All right. There's our hill, and now I need that white again. So, move this light. I apologize for my disorganization and the fact that I have lost most things, not least of all, maybe my mind. Um, eventually, those boxes of loom parts will be reassembled and we will have uh, fun working on the Harrisville. I'm going to put the Harrisville loom right there. So i um, planning some bigger pieces and I will set up the overhead mount so that sometimes you can see what I'm working on for the camera, overhead camera mount, sorry. Um, Yes, what I was going to say is that about fringeless, wow, I am so sorry. My brain is um, very tired, I think. Um, Linda said that in the fringeless class, the, um, Sarah plays her concertina, and it is really fantastic. So um, even if you just want to listen to the class for the concertina playing, it's really fun. Uh, Sarah laughs. She says concertina experiments are not so tidy. Um, yeah, so Sherry, good good point. Um, Sherry said that Molly has inspired her with spirals. They're challenging. So they are challenging. And she's talking about Molly Elkind. So if you don't follow her, she's a tapestry weaver in Santa Fe. And she's working on this very cool piece that has um, spirals in it. Um, and she actually, I think, I mean, I've been just following it on social media. She's on Facebook. Um, I think she's also on Instagram. Um, she, I think she ripped most of it out and started over or something. It was, I, I just remember thinking, oh my God, I never would have unwoven that much. But, um, she had bef before and after pictures showing how she changed it. So that was really cool. Um, yeah. So check out Molly Elkind. Um, I don't know what her Twitter or her, I don't know what, if you, you'll find her <laughs> if you don't know her, um, Yes, bookcase. So <laughs> you don't want to hear moving stories, do you? Yeah, this book, these two bookcases are full. There is one over there that you can't see, and there's one right here that you can't see, and I still don't have enough shelves for all of the books. So um, we don't own really furniture. We have books and looms, and um, the moving guys were not happy about the weight of the books. They said the truck was really heavy. I also have a piano, um, which is also right over there. Uh, so the truck was really heavy and the guys, um, young, I mean, God bless them. They knew what they were doing in terms of moving, but they weren't so great in terms of maps because they went to the entirely wrong town. If you know where Durango is, they went to Gunnison from Fort Collins. So not anywhere near each other. In fact, there's a very, very big mountain range between Durango and Gunnison. So they had to drive this truck unnecessarily over many extra passes as they came down through Telluride, and they blew a tire. <laughs> so I'm so grateful that nobody died, and also that um, the tire that blew was on a set of dualies, so there was another tire there taking the weight of the truck, which was very heavy because of all the books that I own. And Emily also has significant amount of books, so 
Anyway, um, we made it in one piece. They survived. They got to spend an extra night in a hotel while their truck was fixed. And they were really great, um, great guys. But uh, Gunnison is not Durango. Um, yeah, it was definitely a heavy, a heavy move. This house actually has a lot of built-in bookcases, so that is going to save us for the time being. It also has a ton of windows, so there's lots and lots of windows and no walls to put anything on, except the wall you see behind me. Um, pretty much the rest of the house is all windows, so um, there's not room to put furniture. Fortunately, we don't really have furniture. Yeah, Marlena, they said they put it in their GPS and that they had the same address as here in Gunnison. And I'm like, uh, no, they don't because there's a zip code. So <laughs> it's not even possible. We do have a weird address that has like numbers. It's all numbers. It's like number, road, number. And so whatever, they found there must have been a similar road there or something. All I can say is that they're super young, but they should have known better. Um, yeah. Oh, good. Patrice just found her on Facebook. I think Molly posts a lot to Facebook, so I would look for her there. I think it's Molly Elkind Textiles or something like that. Um, I apologize. Uh, I guess I don't really need to apologize. I just don't know where my yarn went today. It was on this table last night, and I'm probably going to find that I absently put it down somewhere here and... Um, Hopefully by the 22nd, I will have something else to show you. I'm anticipating some things I'm going to teach to the class in, um, or show to the class in Taos in a couple of weeks. So I'm sure I will have some of those things to share with you too, or perhaps a whole new tapestry. Um, yeah, so keep weaving everybody. And thank you for, <laughs> thank you for coming to see my <laughs> disaster of a studio. I really, I appreciate you um, following me and uh, coming even when I am kind of a mess. I'm kind of a mess. Um, it'll get better. Um, check the dog bed. Carol says check the dog bed for the yarn. Yep. It's with the blue tape. I agree. Molly Elkind Handwoven. Thank you, Margo. If you go to Facebook, Molly Elkind Handwoven. Let's go look at that spiral piece she's working on. It's really cool. And um, she's got lots of great ideas. So. Thanks for coming, everybody. Happy weaving. Keep weaving. I'll be back in three weeks, and I will have found that yarn by now, and I will let you know where it was when I do find it. <laughs> I'll take a picture. Um, I appreciate your support and for that you all came today, and I will have a better studio tour when I get these looms set up and figure out where everything is. Um, y'all are great. Keep weaving. Have fun. Um, We'll have something fun to talk about later. Next, I'm just at the rambling stage. So love you guys. Thanks for weaving and for showing up. And I will see you in a few weeks. Uh, until then, I will. Um, yeah, Kathy says to get some rest. I need. I think I need, think I need some rest. Um, yeah. Actually, everything is, I mean, we're doing great. It's fine. The, you know, everybody's okay, uh, I think. So it'll all be good and this will all be set and it will be funny eventually and we can catch you all up. Um, catch you all up soon. All right, y'all. See you later and uh, three weeks from now. In the meantime, keep weaving. <laughs>